Hi everyone and welcome back. I hope you guys are having a good holiday and building lots of gun plus. So it's the end of the year and I thought I would take the opportunity to reflect on my projects this year and tease a little bit of what's to come next year. Also because I haven't uploaded in a while so this is just a great excuse to put some stuff out. And if you haven't seen my projects and would like to check them out, I'll put links to them in the description below. In total I've done 9 kits this year so there's quite a lot to talk about. So let's dive in. So in January, I finished the 148 scale new Gundam from G-System. This is still the biggest project I've done to date, not just because of the size, but uh, I also did a lot of customizations to update its look, including filling and scribing, replacing the head, etc. It was kind of a love-hate project, as it was my first G-System kit, and I didn't realize how many weight issues there would be. Basically, all the joints needed to be pinned down and locked because the quote-unquote movable joints can't handle like 6 kilos of resin and be movable at the same time. And I remember the first time I put the funnels on the back, the whole thing just gave up and then collapsed. Fortunately, I was able to salvage it and uh, yeah, it looked okay in the end. In March, I finished the Zero Gravity Judge in Forbidden Gundam Colors. This kit is so fantastic and it's so rare to have kits that's so well designed and made by a third party. I actually had a hard time trying to figure out the color scheme for the Forbidden Gundam because there are mainly two versions of the color scheme. One is more sort of yellow-green and one is more cyan-green. Not to mention green is actually quite difficult to mix as well. If I went back in time I would probably uh, make the green a little bit more yellow and the dark brown a little bit lighter and browner. Also in March, I made the series How to Resin Gunpla, where I show the process of working a resin kit from start to finish. There are things that I've learned after this point, so maybe I will do a revisit in the future. But it was great to work on a cute little SD Cycle Gundam. In April, I did the Wing Gundam Snow White Prelude, using the new Wing Zero for car and a scrappy AW Wings add-on. The add-on was a very dodgy recast of the metal build, and it's got to be one of the worst quality plastic kits out there, as there was a lot of mold defects, texture was rough, and none of the ball joints actually fit. And I did a little bit of panel line scribing, I added LEDs. There was a new company who made a better version of the wings now, and Cosmos who made the LEDs for the wing Gundam. So if I were to do this project again, it would be a lot more easier. And I shaded the white using the same brown in another area, so there is a subtle warm tone overall, and I was quite happy with it. It also placed in the final of the Sakura Aurelius Clean vs Weathered contest, so that was quite uh, rewarding. Soon after the Wing Gundam, I did the Area 51 DOM conversion. It's one of those builds that look more complicated than they actually are, and it's just a lovely design, using sharper edges and bulking it up, make it more rugged and menacing looking. I wanted the purple to be more blue than red, so more violet than magenta. Still, I think it might have been a bit too vibrant for my liking. And a huge bazooka is from SH Studio. In June, I did the Perfect Rate Unleash RX-78 II, and it's simply an amazing kit. Just the level of engineering that went into it. And the different phases made painting and assembly very straightforward. This kit is so detailed out of the box that I had to remove a few of them so that I could add my own details. And the Origin version weapons are from Sumimasen Designs, and they look amazing with the PGU. And he also redesigned the backpack just so it can hold the cannon. But the add-on was uh, printed out of a 3D printer and not casted, so sanding-wise there was more prep to be done. Nonetheless though, this kit was probably the most pleasant kit to work on this year, and I'm really satisfied with how it turned out. Also in June is the MG Gundam Barbatos. This one had the SH Studio Resin Detail Kit, Cosmos LEDs and the Dragon Momoko Recast Swords. Oh, and the metal parts for the inner frame too. So yeah, this was quite a fully loaded Barbatos. And the Cosmos LEDs actually came with the base as well, so it's a nice touch. And to be fair, I wasn't a fan of the Barbatos in the first place, but this kit with the resin kit has a lot of nice details and the LEDs were so easy to install. 
so it was quite a fun project to work on. The color scheme is basically a carbon copy of the uh, SH Studio official pictures. Three months later in September, I finished the G-System 172nd scale DO. This kit, similar to the 148th scale New Gundam, took a long time because G-System kits need a lot of prep and fixing before you can do any painting. But having learned from the New Gundam, I made sure to do structural testing and found the buff flap is too heavy and you need the support in order to stand. But this kit came with a plastic inner frame which was way better than the New Gundam and more stable as well. And this kit has such a cool design and the sheer size of it is just so attention grabbing. There was also a great exercise to paint yellow as it's probably the most difficult color to mix. For example if you add white or black it will just dull the color. So I mainly use orange and tan for different shades of it. But the worst aspect of this kit is definitely the decals. All of those uh, white stripes and grey decals at the legs go over edges and there really isn't a clean way to do them, so they were very frustrating to apply. And last but not least, in November I finished the 160th scale Cubelay from GM Dream and SH Studio. This was quite a special project as I really liked the Cubelay design, and I liked how GM Dream gave it some 5 star stories detail to it. But at the same time, I didn't really like the three main Cubelay's color schemes, so I ended up using the MAN 103 color scheme, which was designed in 2005, I believe. Overall, it was a really impressive kit, but there are some certain like annoying bits, like uh, the parts in the wings. And I thought the panel details were lacking a little bit as well, so I added some on my own. And in terms of size, it is somehow still smaller than the 172nd scale DO, but it is very wide because of the wings. And with the Cubelay done, I've updated my Mono Eye Power Rangers team. Yes, I know Cubelay technically has two eyes, but uh, let's just pretend. <laughs> and I hope you can see through my works that I like big and bulky designs, and my style is usually shading. So that's what I've been up to this year, but for next year, if you have been following my social medias, you know that I'm currently finishing the Yuja Lan Yakushiki conversion kit. And my other confirmed future projects will be the MG Barbatos conversion again, the PG ground type conversion, a few Gundam Artifacts Series 2 kits, the 135th scale EXS bust, and mechanical 172nd scale EXS. The last two I'm actually really looking forward to because they just look really crazy. So yeah, there's plenty to look forward to in 2022. And before I sign off, I just want to say that yes, I am and I will be accepting commissions for next year as that's the main form of support to allow me to keep doing what I do. So just send me a message on my socials if you are interested. I hope you have a Merry Christmas and a great year ahead and I'll see you in 2022.